Hello and welcome to learn system view in five minutes. This is tutorial five. In this tutorial, we will look at different data types in system view data flow simulation. Now look at this schematic and you will see various components placed. And one thing which is very clear from this uh, schematic is different components have different colors. So one must be wondering why there are so many type of colors in system view? Well, each color of system view uh, terminals in these components uh, represents one specific data type. Remember, using data flow simulation, we are either doing a digital or a baseband kind of uh, configuration design, or we are looking at a mixed signal system analysis. So it's very important to keep track of different data types and understand some of these data types. So there are five data types to, to remember. They are represented by five color coding. So the orange color here represents the integer data. The blue represents float or double. The green represents complex and the black represents RF analog or what we call in system view as envelope. The red color uh, you know, used by some of these blocks are like universal. That means they can accept any kind of data format uh, which you will have in your design. Now also because our signal uh, would be flowing from one type of data into another type of data, there are a few blocks which allows you to do data conversion. Like in this case here, this block allows you to convert a complex data into an RF analog or envelope data. Now the complex data, the input here could be I plus JQ representing a complex uh, envelope. Now, typically the frequency of that envelope will be zero Hertz, but what about if we want to convert it to some RF carrier? Then in those cases, we could use this block. Now how to assign center frequency? Uh, you could use the parameter of this block, which is a, a parameter associated. And here you can type in any frequency on which you want to do conversion. Or you could connect a oscillator externally to this component. So this is like a control pin. And that's why it's shown in a gray color. Now this is not a specific data type, but it just signifies that you could feed some external control signal or external parameter to this particular block. Now the common use model, if you don't have anything connected to this pin, then the information described in the block description will be used. But in case we go ahead and put in, let's say an oscillator component here. And if I make the connection of this oscillator to this pin, then this will take precedence and any frequency which we specify here will be used in this block. And this component parameter of FC will be overwritten by this input, right? Now also notice the two blocks kept here are pretty identical to each other. Are they same? Well, in terms of behavior, they are same, but they are not entirely same. Notice the thickness in this arrow and this arrow, it's different because this block here treats a regular data type, but this block, if you look at the component name is underscore M, which represents matrix. So if you have a matrix of signal coming in, and you want the matrix formatted signal at the output, we will end up using this block and not this block. In system view, most of the component have their matrix representation or matrix equivalent. Now, the last thing to notice in this uh, schematic here, the few blocks which have a single arrow and there are a few blocks which have two arrows. So how, what does it mean? In case of single arrow, it, it represents that the block can take single stream of input. In case the block has two arrows, means it could add, it could take in multiple inputs at the same time. For example, uh, the classic component here to represent as adder. Now both of these adders are doing slightly different things. So this adder at the bottom is used for envelope signals. When you have two RF envelopes and you want to multiplex them, probably we can use this block. But if we have, let's say two integer or two float uh, kind of signals, if we have to add them, then we can use this particular block. 
the only care taken to be used while we use this block. For example, let me put two constants and let's say we want to add these two constants here. So we can wire it up. Now while wiring, if we wire something like this, it will create a fault in system view simulation because it doesn't know the signal should travel this way or the signal should travel this way. So while making connections um, at this multi input pins, we always need to take care of shorting the wires right at this pin node. And this way the inputs, both the inputs will flow to this adder. Now that ends our this tutorial video. Hope this tutorial information would be useful for your design work. Thanks for watching the video and look forward to see you in the next tutorial video.